Hello and welcome to this art channel. My name is Ilkje van Wiersma and today I'd like to show you how I painted this portrait of this Scottish boy. And there's also uh, a next one for my uh, collection. I'm uh, working on a collection for 12 portraits uh, of uh, different children of different cultures. And you may have noticed that, but if you're new here, that is why uh, once in a while you see me do a portrait. This is number six, so I'm halfway now. I have to do uh, a lot more portraits, but uh, yeah, I really like them. And I discovered quite a lot. I'm learning uh, a lot, and especially on how to um, get my approach to these paintings better. And therefore I uh, made this uh, video, because uh, this tutorial, because I'm very excited to, to share this with you, because I have now a, a five layering step that I always um, basically always apply when I'm painting portraits of people and uh, those are including five layering stages and obviously you can add a six layer in number seven it doesn't matter but this is the five stages that I use and I noticed um, also by myself when I was a, be a beginner of painting but also the questions that I get uh, on social media but also in, uh, in real life is uh, what um, People struggle about uh, what they may expect uh, when they apply a first layer, a second layer, and a third layer, and how it um, yeah, kind of has to look at the end of those layers. Even though you are in the middle of painting a painting, it can be very confusing what to expect when you apply a layer. Uh, for example, a third layer. So you have your basics on there and you're applying a, not a layer, but what can you expect? And if you are you on the right track or do you have to change some things, it can be very confused when you are painting portraits and uh, obviously in general, but also uh, especially on portraits. I found it uh, personally very hard to understand what to expect at the end of a layer. And also, I, um, because I'm doing more portraits, I have now a, a basic process of a basic technique that I use for uh, layering my portraits, painting my portraits. And, and those, uh, uh, that technique is including five layers and I really like to uh, share those layers with you and also what to expect, like I said, at the end of a layer. So therefore I made uh, pictures uh, while I was painting this portrait and I'm going to show you the, those pictures on the end of a layer. So first we're going to talk about the layer, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and then I'm going to show you a picture. Because at the end of those first layers it doesn't look good. It doesn't really doesn't look good. Yeah, generally people are speaking about the ugly stages. The ugly stages you have to go through to get a nice end piece. And I hope to give you by this tutorial a little bit more confidence in what you may expect. So you go through those layers because those ugly layers ugly layers have to be there to get that nice end piece but I found them so so hard and I know there are a lot of people who struggle with those layers with the ugly stages and what to expect so I hope I can help you with this tutorial so let's that start that tutorial <laughs> and this first a layer is all about just blocking in the general uh, different shapes and the light and the darks in this painting and what I also watch is that I don't lose my line because I drew in my portraits before I started painting and that is also very very important to have a good drawing before you start this painting and I didn't talk about this uh, in the intro but yeah it's kind of obviously but yeah you need to have that uh, nice and good drawing in and I just have a basic, uh, few basic lines and maybe I'm gonna do a tutorial about how I uh, draw in my portraits because that's uh, basically an old, a whole different story and that is not covered with this. I'm just today I show you the layering process and uh, when I start uh, with this first layer I'm just blocking in the uh, general lights and darks and thereby um, I'm really watching my lines, so I indicate my lines with uh, with paint now because I'm uh, gonna lose my uh, pencil strokes, but I just use paint, a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, to indicate where uh, different shapes are going. And I'm not, not really watching those small details yet. That will come uh, after these, this first layer. I just have a, uh, I need a sort of map where to know where what should go. So that is what I'm working on 
and as you can see I my darks are not that dark uh, yet I have to rework them only the eyes are very dark but also those uh, didn't uh, look uh, quite well and his mouth is uh, in this stage very dark so I need to lighten that up but I'm just uh, like I said just blocking in I'm not worried about that everything should um, be correct at this stage I have a long way to go this is just blocking in and I keep that in mind because Sometimes I like to uh, focus on the details too early on. It's just uh, because it doesn't look right and I think I need more details. But now I am working on this first layer and this first layer isn't be to be exact. It's just a sort of map on the canvas that I know where what should go. And I'm going to refine all of that, but it need to be later on. And especially in oils because the oils are wet and um, they need to dry up to get uh, nice details in. Especially of uh, when you use uh, when you paint like this. Of course, there is uh, you can do wet and wet into wet, and you can uh, add some details there. But in this layering process, I think it's um, for me it's easier to get those details in, and I like it uh, more because this uh, this technique suits me much better than wet into wet. But here I'm doing a little bit of wet into wet but in the background. I like that smooth transition, and I can make it quite easily because that paint is still wet. So I um, layer in a, a little bit of lighter color and then get my mop brush and uh, use that mop brush to get rid of my brush strokes. The mop brush is a very big brush. I don't have paint on it. I just barely let those bristles touch the canvas and that will smoothen it out. And here is a uh, update, a uh, photo on the first layer. This is all what you can expect in the first layer. It doesn't look right and need a lot of work, but yeah, this is just a nice map for me to work on. I generally know where what should go and I can now refine it with my other layers. And that will I do with the second layer. Every, uh, refine those details. So we have now a quite a nice indication what to expect with that first layer. And like I said, it needed a lot of more work. So we now start at the second layer. And you see, I'm going to work a lot on those details. I'm gonna refine the texture of his hair, making clumps of hair, not individually hairs yet, maybe a few, but the focus on the clumps of um, hair and I'm going uh, to glaze over them later on obviously and then I can put in a little bit more layers if needed but now it's just uh, focus on the, those details I have laid in the eyebrows and also a little bit of um, uh, of light in the, in the eyes and as you can see on his mouth it was very dark but I laid, laid in a little bit of uh, lighter lines and I also lightened up the, that color and now I'm working on the, his sweater and I'm blocking in uh, some light and some darks and I'm really uh, make them a bit stronger than in that first layer. They needed a little bit more attention. And so I'm uh, reworking areas, I'm reworking his mouth. I uh, saw that it was a little bit too dark still. So I'm glazing over that and I'm now I'm letting it uh, that mouth dry. And here and there I'm doing a few of um, yeah changes in lights and darks. And then I let it dry and it should look something like this. This is the second layer. It needed a lot of more work, obviously. But yeah, we have a little bit more detail of quite a little bit more detail in than uh, when we added those that first layer. So now we're gonna hype up that contrast really well and we're gonna focus on those details. We need every single detail to be in there uh, at that third layer. So let's start that third layer now. And now, once again, we're going to focus on those details. Better refine them than the uh, second layer. And I'm also starting glazing. I'm not glazing in my colors, but I'm uh, reworking my light, lights and my darks to give uh, his face a little bit, uh, of a little bit, <laughs> a much more natural shape because it wasn't uh, quite uh, good yet. And I'm starting in uh, with uh, those little details like uh, his uh, freckles and also his uh, eyebrows lights in the eyes and uh, I really focused on that on those little details who are very very important and um, it's going quite quickly but this layer takes some time because it's uh, yeah all those little details have to paint in now because I have the general shapes I'm really working on those little shapes in this third layer 
And this is uh, what you might expect at the end of a third layer. It uh, looks much better than if the uh, previous layers. And now it's time to uh, glaze in my uh, colors. It is looking right. I have the shapes in like I uh, wanted them. And now I it just need a nice, nice color. So let's start it fourth layer now. And this is such a nice layer because now we're gonna include that color. And I uh, really wanted to let that, those colors pop in this painting because there's a lot of lights and darks going on. A beautiful light on his head and I, like I said I really want to let it pop. And it makes um, the painting so much more nicer to look at now we're including those colors. And I really like this approach when I started with uh, basically black and white and I'm using a, a little bit of raw umber so it's not not that cold black and white but I uh, yeah with some brown tones and I'm really focused in the f uh, first second and third layer on those details and now I'm really focusing on the colors getting those colors right are uh, how I like them because I'm not always sticking with my reference photo I including some um, other colors as well because I like it and I think it's more interesting to look at but yeah this is uh, um, all about colors because we have those details in and I'm glazing over those details so I don't lose them I just uh, uh, um, hinting them with some colors so they show up uh, more naturally than uh, before and they uh, get that uh, like I said that nice color on them and here and there I'm losing maybe if a little bit of detail I can paint that in but um, that is uh, not much so don't be afraid of that if you are using a glazing medium like I uh, do I like that uh, the liquid from winter and Newton which uh, dries up uh, overnight and I'm really thin thinning out my paint and my colors and um, if you glaze them over you shouldn't uh, lose your details if you are losing too much details your paint is just too thick so you know then that you need to uh, thin out your paint even more and this is just a, f a first layer of color so the colors don't pop uh, as much uh, um, as they do in the uh, in the finished piece but just this these are also the first layers of color so there's not uh, much popping on <laughs> going on with your colors yet but uh, yeah you have to uh, um, see some color changing there obviously but this is uh, how it looks uh, at the end of kind of looks at the end of the third layer and um, with the fifth layer we are gonna let those colors pop uh, much more so therefore I uh, think it's time to start that fifth and last layer and now we are at the fifth layer and the fifth layer is the I think the most wonderful one because now everything should fall into place as you had planned it if you followed the uh, uh, previous layers uh, quite well this is a very nice state because you now only have to um, work on your colors uh, even a, a bit more and refining some areas but the general shapes and colors are in there so this is not the most hard hardest part if you ask me just some uh, touch-ups here and there refining uh, ex uh, yeah especially your colors because you have all those details in already just focus on that color lights and darks and um, yeah it's now really getting to the end of the painting and like I said this is such a wonderful stage because I can now focus completely on those last little details uh, color wise and I'm glazing in layers and layers of paint but as you may um, notice those um, areas are quite uh, smaller than before I'm just glazing a little bit of color here and there and I'm changing the colors a lot because I want to have some lights and some darks and those nice transitions those are very important is in this uh, stage so there I'm focusing on a uh, um, quite a lot uh, at, um, yeah, at this stage at in the fifth layer and I'm uh, reworking uh, some areas and once again it's all about those nice transitions and now I'm glazing over the hair again I did um, earlier on a little bit of um, highlights I, I painted in a little bit of highlights and now I'm glazing over them and I am uh, barely let my um, brush touch the canvas when I'm glazing over those highlights because those highlights were a little bit wet so I don't want to smudge those paints in uh, with one another but if you do it um, 
very gently you can uh, easily adjust those a little highlights because it's not a lot of paint on your canvas and uh, basically it's uh, wet into wet but yeah I'm, uh, I'm calling it glazing <laughs> and I'm uh, like I said I'm still reworking and uh, especially on those uh, freckles in the face because there were a lot and there were a lot of different colors in those freckles so I had to rework them uh, quite a lot and also the eyes I'm really refining those eyes with color touch uh, touch ups and um, for the corners of the eyes I needed a little bit darker and I uh, want a nice transition to the light and the dark but uh, yeah that were this were the five layers and this is the uh, picture of the end uh, painting and uh, yeah everything uh, was falling into place eventually but like I said this is a really really nice approach if you are uh, painting portraits it makes it uh, for me at least so much easier to paint portraits so there was a, a lot to talk about but these are the five general steps that I take uh, when I am painting a portrait and it really really work, works great uh, you may change it a little bit to the uh, way of painting if uh, like you do it yourself you don't maybe you don't want to do a um, underpainting with uh, without the colors maybe you want to start out uh, right away with colors but you also can apply them you Obviously, it, it, does it, um, it shows up at the end of the stage a little bit different, but I, I hope to give an answer, sort of answer to those end layers, so to the ugly stages where you have to go through. Because if you do that, you will end up with a wonderful painting, but you have to go through it. And that was something that I struggled so long with, and I couldn't find a right answer. But I know there isn't a right answer because we are people and people are not the same so we do it as uh, in our own ways but in our own ways but I hope to have um, yeah to give you a little bit of answers uh, about questions what you may expect so if you have any uh, suggestions or maybe you have some uh, experience yourself you like to share please feel free to do that in the comment section below because I really like to read them and I think other people like to read them as well because we can learn from each other that is for me the nicest way to learn uh, basically anything so feel free and um, yeah leave those um, those uh, experience of your own uh, in the comment section and uh, yeah share them with us and also I like to uh, welcome the new subscribers thank you for sub subscribing to my channel and of course all the subscribers who were already there thank you for staying with me because I have a really great time to making these tutorials but and uh, but yeah I need uh, some uh, subscribers of course because uh, I'm not a big channel but I uh, really like to uh, build up a little bit so thank you very very much I see it as a big compliment for my channel and for my work so once again thank you um, yeah so this is it for now uh, the last part I like to share with you is that you can also follow follow me on Instagram Facebook and on my own website I try to post as many as I can there some weeks I post a lot of well, quite a lot some weeks I uh, do a little less that is because I'm too busy to post because uh, this is a uh, hobby and I try to do it as a uh, on a professional level but yeah when I'm not always having the time but I try to share as much informative uh, stuff there as, uh, as I can uh, because otherwise I don't share anything because I uh, want to have a good, good content on my, uh, my channels but if you like you can follow me there and for now I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you at one of my next tutorials bye bye